it's very common to hear Zimbabweans, a boss, that we are a very educated society. That our comparative advantage when you compare us to other countries, usually, if you want to compare yourself as a country, uh, you should compare yourself with your northern neighbor. Yeah, that's fair. Um, usually it's risky to compare yourself to your southern neighbor. But very easy to compare to the northern neighbor. And, and, and when we do that, we often say we are more educated, better educated than our northern neighbors. We have tended to think this, whether this is uh, true from an empirical point of view is another matter. But you know, uh, our disposition is to see ourselves as very educated. Tagadziza, Tinoroba, Chikoro. But is that true? I think we have to unpack it by looking at the numbers. First, of our literacy base, then knowledge base, then skills base, and ask ourselves, are we ready to meet the challenge, the new challenge of industrialization and modernization? So, I, I, I'm going to put a, a slide that summarizes our literacy level. And, and I'm going to put that slide um, in order to have you ask a fundamental question whether that slide uh, reflects the state of literacy in our country in a satisfactory manner. Since we boast that we are very educated, is this true? We are illiterate people. And what does it mean to say we are illiterate people? Um, I put this slide, can you see it? That slide is showing the screen there. Okay. That's very good. Well, in trying to come up with STEM, I want to walk you through the thinking process that has uh, informed our internal discussions so that we can understand the role of STEM in reviving our economy, but in particular the role of STEM as a strategic intervention that we believe will be pivotal in supporting the industrialization and modernization of our country. We want you to appreciate the thinking process behind uh, the, uh, that uh, consideration or exercise. What we all know, uh, at least over the last uh, six or so years, uh, based on the 24th census is that there are about 13 million of us at least this is uh, what the census of 2012 found out that there are 13 million of Zimbabweans and we also know and, and this is a very important uh, uh, statistic it's uh, amazing to me that uh, a lot of people don't do much, if anything, about it uh, in their everyday lives, and yet it is a very important uh, statistic. Is that uh, uh, we have about 18, I mean, sorry, about 8.5, in particular, it's 8,485,639 Zimbabweans who are about 15 years. It's also important that the majority of these are actually 
below a thirty five, uh, which makes us, uh, in population terms, a, a, a young nation. But significantly about that is the uh, fact that our literacy rate, and this is the number we use to boast about, is 92%. Our literacy rate is 92%. Uh, and the actual number of the Zimbabweans who are literate is 7,806,000. 788, again based on the 24 census. And the question is, what do we mean when we say we have this literacy rate or that 7.8 million Zimbabweans are literate? Many of us want to say it means we are very educated. Is that what you understand also? Do you feel that this is the yardstick to measure our education? That because our literacy rate is 92%, we are an educated nation. Well, of course, it does mean 92% can read and write. What we are not sure is read and write their name or, or something more useful than that. It's important for them to be able to write uh, or for you to be able to write your name and, and spell it correctly. There are some people who spell their names wrongly and they defend that and, uh, by saying this is how I have spelled it since ever since since I was taught. Uh, I'm tempted to give a common such uh, example, but uh, I, I, I will not uh, follow the temptation. But, but in, in normal terms, it should mean being able to read, write, with understanding. In, in normal terms, it means or should mean being uh, functionally literate. That you know, you can function in society, you can read instructions, follow them, uh, you can write a narrative and so forth. But what is interesting for the purpose of this discussion is that it basically means you have attained primary, we have, we have done primary school. Your formal education is primary school. It means that um, you are uh, part of 11.4% of our population. And that number is 967,362. It means you, if you are literate and you are part of this 92%, you can read and write with some understanding. You are part of the 11.4% who have attained primary education. So when you boast that you are better than your neighbor, you are saying at least you have a primary education. Don't think that what you have. It's a good number for those uh, of uh, our colleagues who are responsible for primary education. It's not a number that we in higher and tertiary education can use or refer to with pride. You understand? Because we're not talking about people in our sector. We're talking about primary education. We can improve on that number by including those with uh, primary and secondary education. The population uh, with primary education is 44%, and if we add uh, sec secondary education, it's, it becomes 
So we have 3.7 million who have primary education, and um, when we add the, that number to those who also complete their secondary education, it's 6.9 of, of our population. Otherwise, if we disaggregate the population with secondary education, it is uh, just below that with primary education. Uh, and it's only 36%. Now, if we look at, begin to look at our population, our higher and tertiary education population, those with uh, tertiary education, and this will be teachers' colleges and uh, uh, polytechnic education. There are only 593,994. Only 593,994 in terms of the 2012 census have tertiary education. You see the number dramatically drops from the number that we use to boast about the level of our education. And it dramatically drops and it's only 7%. So, when we get to that number, we now need to be systematic and look at the knowledge base of our country. Not just our literacy base, because when we start going to tertiary education, higher education, we are now talking about the formulation of our knowledge industry. Those who play an important role in driving our economy. So, look at that. What is very interesting is how huge the literate population is, isn't it? That's the population, that's the big egg. That's the primary. And the one that you go around posting, you wear your, whatever you wear against your not northern neighbor. It's that population, the big one, is 7.8, as we saw from that uh, breakdown. Then the next one, uh, we are going, to, starting from your side, is uh, the left, going to your right. Uh, the next one is the high school one, the Form 4, the Form 4 population. And those who make it out of that population, it's just 20%. The, the, the pass rate is, the average, the average is 20%. The next one is Form 6, the high school one, which is now relevant for universities. The Form 4 one is relevant for tertiary institutions. You need your O level in, in order to uh, be considered for admission in our teachers' colleges as well as our polytechnics. But the high school one is 8%. That's the third one. Then the fourth one is the tertiary. That's the one we're looking about there. Uh, the sequencing could have been better, but that is uh, 593,994 that we talked about. Only 593,094. The one that is the business of universities such as this one is the next, which is the undergraduates. It's only 509,000 
138. Again, keep in mind it's the uh, 24th census. That's the, those are the undergraduates we have produced. And then next are the masters. The masters population. It's only 169,713. My MA. In a normal society, when we talk about educated people, we mean those with a university education. Isn't it? Should we be talking about that group? Like, if we want to say, yeah, now, we want to count you among the educated. You should have at least a degree, isn't it? But it's only 169,713 in masters. In a normal society, we say you should have a degree. But in a, an industrializing society, what kind of a degree is, is very important? Uh, but one degree that you want to see more of, and for that degree to have direct linkages with the society, the public sector, industry, is the PhD degree, isn't it? What did you say? I'm not sure who is sitting here, whether this is just undergraduates or masters, but I don't think I would see that. Full PhD. Otherwise, you are wasting time. Can I sing at PhD? These people who are coming from uh, the polytechnic population and so forth, uh, uh, they are the ones who get the jobs ahead of those with the bachelors because. They are know how it's, it's, it's more grounded. But look at our number, 5091. I had a, a number, uh, I thought I had written it somewhere, but uh, uh, I, I was looking for it, uh, I, I can find it here. That was given me just before we started by the uh, acting vice chancellor of the few PhDs that we are producing here. But when we have people with PhDs, not all of them are useful. Because, especially in this number, some of them have PhDs in divinity <laughs> and heaven knows what else. So, often when we are looking for the useful ones, we try and find those who are. Uh, in science and engineering, and, and, and you know, those kinds, eh? I must, for the avoidance of doubt, I must make clear that uh, the useless group includes political scientists. <laughs> but you see, only 2,546. Now, this is Zimbabwe's knowledge base. We can only have this conversation and be honest about it at a university. Because if we go out there, then the people will not understand what we are talking about. Isn't it? They will even think we are insulting them. But this, if you look at this uh, uh, slide, which uh, gives our knowledge base, it basically tells us that we have a very good basic education, a very good foundation, but another very poor higher education sector. It's self-evident, isn't it? It's obvious. You cannot industrialize with this kind of base. This knowledge base 
cannot drive industrialization. You would need a radical transformation or reform of higher education in order for it to have an appropriate knowledge base that will be relevant for industrialization. But over the years, this has been, you know, the, the, the base, and uh, shortly I'm going to show you how this translates into the most critical aspect of uh, the task, uh, and, and, and uh, one that I hope when you are exposed to it, you will understand.